कुछ भी फिल्ट करके हो जाता Good morning, uh, everyone, and welcome to the fourth quarter presentation uh, from our Oceanson office here at Fornbu, Norway. Uh, we are very proud of the front page of our quarter presentation this time. You can see that our last uh, floating PV system, the two megawatt installation at the Banja Hydropower Dam in Albania. Uh, as many are aware of, there were some initial problems with this uh, plant uh, some time ago, but uh, we are, uh, and myself, very proud of the entire team in Oceansun that accomplished uh, this uh, feat. Uh, we'll talk more about this uh, system uh, later on. <clears throat> Uh, agenda for today is to, for new viewers, briefly go through the purpose of our company, uh, the main uh, business activities and uh, developments last quarter. And then also we will uh, be joined by my colleague, CFO Carl Lavenius, who will give a market update and uh, the financial numbers. So uh, the purpose of Ocean Sun is to facilitate uh, floating PV or floatable tanks, sometimes called. It is uh, driven by uh, the need for large surface area for the utility sized solar power plants and uh, to put this on water bodies, either on lakes, near shore ocean or reservoirs. And the idea is then to not get in the conflict with agriculture, urbanizations or recreational areas for uh, uh, people where the consumer or the, um, of the power uh, is located. And we have a very special technical solution to solve this uh, problem by using floating membranes and solar modules placed horizontally directly on to these uh, elastic membranes. And we can build multiple of these rings in a global uh, making uh, large uh, power plants. We claim uh, that th uh, this is the best uh, floating PV technology at the moment. Uh, main advantages are that you can facilitate this with a very low capital expenditure and the, the lean use of materials uh, going into these uh, systems. Uh, it, they can also be built at a very high pace, uh, important in the big uh, solar farms, and not to mention the lean transportation. These membranes have the ability that you can pack and fold them together and place uh, each of the membrane inside a 40 foot transportation container. On top of this, solar cells uh, are very dependent on the cell temperature in the efficiency uh, and the voltage across the cell. And by placing uh, the modules on this thin membrane, we get a very strong heat dissipation to the water body, lowering uh, the cell temperature, increasing the efficiency and the overall yield from the uh, solar farm. And uh, uh, so far, floating PV has uh, only been mostly put on very benign waters. Uh, uh, and uh, we, our system, we have the ability to also cope with uh, waves and uh, near shore uh, conditions uh, on uh, the ocean. Of course, increasing the potential for deployment of this type of system uh, greatly. Uh, this is just uh, some example of some numbers uh, coming out of this from uh, a feed study. This is a so-called front-end engineering design that was conducted for in Europe for a large uh, energy company. And in this uh, example, it's a 45 megawatt peak installed uh, floating solar power system. You can see on the bottom right, very dense packaging of these rings. So we have a high energy density. 
And uh, uh, in this uh, study, we, we, we end up with an LCOE of uh, 4 cents per kilowatt hour, which is a very favorable, uh, attractive uh, price of energy in, in Europe these days. It's possible to construct such a system within uh, eight months, and uh, it uh, consists then of 65 uh, individual uh, disks that are uh, arranged uh, the, in the way that you can see. Installation capex of about uh, 60 cents uh, per uh, watt peak. Uh, now to the more uh, ongoing uh, activities. Like I mentioned, the Banya Dam in Albania. This is a fantastic floating PV system. Uh, just to get the picture of the size of this, uh, the surface deck on uh, uh, this uh, system is about the same as the large uh, aircraft carrier, Nimitz class, so more than uh, 16,000 square meters, uh, uh, and uh, still covering only a very small fraction of uh, the lake surface. So looking at this, of course, the, the, the potential is tremendous. Uh, to to expand uh, with this type of technology. The overall system was built uh, according to plan and the budget. Uh, this one will produce uh, in this location about three gigawatt hours uh, annually, and uh, and uh, it now uh, serves as a showcase. Or uh, we have lots of researchers, uh, students, uh, and. Uh, traveling now to this site to learn about this new technology and also to monitor carefully and to document the, the, the output from uh, such systems. Also with many visits by other new uh, customers. Uh, also in uh, China, uh, this is an ongoing, this is more on the on the borders of the capability of uh, probably of this uh, type of uh, membrane solution. This is more or less open sea in the yellow sea. It's a, s a smaller uh, 0.5 megawatt system that is being uh, tested and developed further uh, with the extended uh, sea trials in the region. We also see active work on, on modification and improvements uh, on the system necessary for this type of locations. It is still in the plans of, uh, of uh, SPIC on this particular location for the 40 uh, wind turbines to install altogether 20 megawatt peak of floating solar. There is an excess capacity in the transformers in these monopiles to, to accommodate uh, uh, such systems. And of course, the very uh, great uh, plans in China to, to build altogether 42 gigawatts of, of, uh, of offshore solar in this uh, province in the upcoming years. This will be a very exciting de development to follow. Uh, this year, it's the it's the year of the rabbit in China. It's the water rabbit, and uh, uh, we are very glad now that we have the ability to travel. Also, the part of our team will soon be able to travel to China to follow up on this. Uh, one of our uh, legacy systems in the Philippines, this is the Magat Dam. Uh, it's a picture of our uh, Southeast Asia president uh, standing on uh, that. That is not a, a small guy. And uh, he is now demonstrating a little bit the ability to walk on the solar panels. Normally an unheard of activity in uh, on solar modules, but we have the ability to, to, due to the hydrostatic pressure on the backside, uh, there is a minimal deflection in the solar modules. They, they, they conducted a large study to investigate the solar panels after three and a half years of operation to, to, to look for any degradation or micro cracking in the solar cells. And it's a very promising results that uh, uh, among thousands or 
uh, of solar cells were investigated by electroluminescence characterization and then uh, non uh, micro crack was found in uh, any of the cells. So this is a very uh, good uh, habitat for the solar module to, to sit on these uh, membranes. We also have some recent developments in a, in a so-called CBM system. It is a condition-based maintenance system. So we monitor each and every string on these floating platforms. So we then can advise on uh, the maintenance intervals and the more smart way to, to operate uh, these systems. This is software that works on all uh, platforms. Uh, uh, handheld phones, uh, tablets, etc., and very easy for the operators to locate any anomaly in uh, the system. And we have the ability to travel directly with boat to each uh, of these rings in large uh, agglomerates. Uh, so, uh, a few words on the most important upcoming projects. Of course, Singapore. Uh, Floating solar in Singapore, very high on the agenda. All uh, the advantages are present. There is a very high cost of land in Singapore. Much of the best rooftops are already taken. So uh, uh, the ability to put uh, the solar systems uh, near shore is, uh, is uh, and we think we are very well positioned to do this with our seaworthy floating PV systems. So with Sunseep, a subsidiary of uh, EDP, uh, we have in the planning the 1.2 megawatt nearshore system in this, well, it's in the Strait of Singapore. Uh, and uh, we hope to start construction later this year. Also with Keppel, uh, 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 very well known institution in Singapore, we have the 1.5 megawatt demonstration system close to the Yurong Island. And um, also worth mentioning the, the Sunning, there is a one megawatt peak demonstration in the planning. And uh, our friends in Greece, MP Quantum, uh, with uh, of course Greece uh, very well suited with its large Water bodies and the multiple islands. We look at the uh, <clears throat> upcoming uh, demo system there. Uh, two uh, times two megawatt. Um, uh, that will pave the way for uh, much larger uh, utility sized uh, systems later on. And MP Quantum has also uh, awarded us the license for this uh, contract already, even if construction has not yet started. I hope to, uh, to progress that in not distant future. So uh, I think that was a brief update on this. And now I will uh, uh, let uh, our chief financial officer, Carla Venus, speak a little bit about the future markets and also the financial numbers. So uh, if we change place. Thank you, Berge. Hello, everybody. And uh, to start up this session on the markets and the financials, I will start by recapping some of the numbers and the fundamentals for floating solar. So uh, to reach the climate goals, it's estimated that we need to build 5,000 gigawatts of solar energy. And the space of land that that would require is equal to approximately 14 to 15 million football pitches. And this is a huge amount of land, which is hard to come by in densely populated areas where the power is consumed and needed without conflict with urbanization, agriculture, forestry or any other. So it's becoming an increasing challenge for these developers to find suitable land. And they are also struggling with fierce competition for the land slots that are given. That's why um, people look to water, uh, where you have abundant of space and also a lot of synergies with, for example, hydropower. Going more into detail on the markets we operate in, uh, in Europe, we are now starting um, 
have been a bit sluggish and falling back a bit compared to Asian market. But uh, interest is now picking up. The uh, We are seeing more tenders coming out and we are also seeing increased push towards floating solar from the European uh, Commission with uh, research grants um, coming up for, for the topic. And uh, we see that this confirms the interest that we have from uh, different players in Europe, both uh, developers and IPPs and also large oil, uh, typical oil companies uh, venturing into renewables. In uh, Southeast Asia, the interest is very high, uh, especially in Singapore, Philippines and, um, and the region around. Uh, we also now see a large interest for the um, island communities where you have uh, perhaps the only potential to replace the uh, diesel driven uh, generators uh, by producing local and uh, near shore floating solar. This is very beneficial both in terms of price of electricity, but also in terms of having a green profile on these uh, tourist islands. China is uh, still the largest markets, market and is also um, the uh, market that has the largest plans going forward. As mentioned earlier, they have shifted focus more towards near shore and offshore, which suits Ocean Sun very well, as we have a unique position to be able to deliver uh, cost-effective systems for this, um, this application. We uh, also see that we have um, this uh, SPIC project uh, ended up in the um, in news in China, the national news, and uh, this has spurred a lot of inter interest in our system, and uh, we have a lot of interesting things coming up. Finally, Americas uh, is uh, progressing well with a lot of interest. We're working closely with a partner there for developing uh, uh, short term some mid-sized, small mid-sized uh, demonstrator system of 5 to 10 megawatts and uh, later on uh, larger systems. On the financials for the uh, year 2022, we see that we ended up with a revenue of 10.4 million, a significant increase from, uh, from 2021 and very positive that we have more uh, project related revenue. Uh, we had a deficit of uh, 17.8 million, which is slightly below uh, what we had in 2021. And uh, we see a good trend here. The uh, net cash flow from um, in the fourth quarter last year was 5.6 million, primarily related to uh, negative results. And we had a, a cash balance of uh, almost 63 million going out of the year. So we are very well uh, positioned with a solid uh, solid base to uh, to continue our operations going forward and to execute on our plans. Thanks a lot. We open up for questions. Any questions for Ocean Sun fourth quarter presentation today? Yes, we have seen some coming in. Uh, first was um, if the production in Albania is according to expectations. Uh, yeah, yes, this is uh, running uh, very nicely. We have. Um, you say that the installation speed has improved significantly. How long does it take to deploy one ring now compared to older previous installations? Yeah, the, 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 this is um, um, now each of the process steps are broken down into uh, different uh, tasks. So it's in a high volume setup, it is now possible and uh, seems, although not fully documented, uh, but uh, it seems possible to deploy uh, uh, one of these rings per day in, 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 a, in a high volume setup. 
Uh, and then we have, are you uh, partaking in any tenders currently? Uh, we OceanSend does not directly uh, is not an EPC or developer as such, but we we collaborate with other EPCs or developers in tenders. The project in uh, or the the uh, example you mentioned from Italy is that from a real project, or is it just theoretically? This is a this is a feed uh, study, so uh, we hope, of course, it will become real. Yeah. And then one question about the panels. Um, based on your test results, is your panels producing better or operating better than a normal? ground mount PV panel? Yes, in general, it's a rather complex uh, question. It also has to do with latitude and uh, the inclination of the solar panel and the astronomical position of the sun. But in the lower latitudes, uh, uh, where the sun is relatively high, there is a distinct advantage with the this type of system. And also in uh, warm ambient temperatures is also uh, a big advantage like uh, we have studied in the Philippines, for instance, and this is also documented by researchers in uh, uh, in scientific uh, journal papers that uh, documents this effect. But but it's it's very much a function of uh, water temperature. It can also be influenced by the current in the water. Uh, but in most interesting location, this is a strong advantage up to 10, even 15% uh, yield increase. Any cooperation with the universities? Yes, this we have done for many years in Oceansund, uh, with uh, particularly with the University of uh, Norwegian Technical University in Trondheim, Norway. And uh, many of our employees have been uh, doing their master thesis, etc. And we also collaborate with Sintef Ocean, in particular on the hydrodynamic part of this. And uh, on the photovoltaic or electrical side of it, we do a lot of collaboration with the Institute for Energy Technology in, uh, in Norway, uh, and but uh, also others. So this now, outside the ocean sun, this engage a high number of researchers and students at the moment. Do you see any projects in the pipeline located in Norway or in the Nordics? Yes, we, we started out in Norway on West Coast Norway because you have the, the, the diesel driven feeding barges in the aquaculture industry. They, 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 uh, they, 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 there is a local market there in Norway to replace some of that diesel consumption with the floating solar. But, uh, we were perhaps a little bit early on this, but the, is something that uh, hopefully will progress a little bit and that uh, the Department of Fisheries and Norwegian authorities will allow this type of system to sit uh, next to the feeding barges. But at the moment there is a quite strict regulation on the permits for the aquaculture industry and not, uh, not uh, these borders are not easily uh, changed. So but uh, hopefully there will be a new legislation on the area and uh, and opening up for floating solar also in this market and of course not only in norway but you have a lot of uh, aquaculture industry in scotland and uh, chile and uh, yeah tasmania and elsewhere where this can be a, a nice uh, technical solution and then Berge, you mentioned or you uh, described the status of the project in China, but we have a question. So perhaps you can just recap a little bit on the status there. Yeah, this is ongoing uh, development R&D activity with our client uh, SPIC. So uh, and uh, like I mentioned, we will have a team traveling there soon. 
And then we have a question, when do you expect Hope to have secured a large scale ut slash utility scale contract? Yeah, this can uh, this can happen any moment. Uh, of course, now we are in a situation where we have uh, several large uh, companies uh, that either plan or already are looking at these demonstration systems and uh, to, to go in detail on this. And uh, I think this is a matter of time before uh, financial investment decisions are taken for larger systems. Very good. I think that was the uh, last question. OK, so then uh, I would like to thank everyone for listening in on the fourth quarter presentation and uh, we will meet again in the next uh, quarter. Thank you.